catch me and have the color guard come in. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Good morning to everyone. How's everybody? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Don Stith. I'm chaplain with Warren Rural Volunteer Fire Department, and I first want to welcome you to the Fire Games. God bless you, and we're looking at a overcast day, so I help our young firefighters aware of this and always remember in the Word of God, it's not always the swiftest that wins. It's the ones that endure. So I want to read you just a couple of verses of a very special psalm, Psalm 91. And I'm reading just two verses. And it reads, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Let us bow our heads in prayer. And before I pray, let's take a moment for any fallen firefighter, active firefighter or retired, let's just give them a moment, moment in honor of them. Thank you. Father, we come this morning first to say thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to travel from our homes into a safe arms of arriving here. Thank you, Lord, for all that could have happened, but you didn't allow. And now as these young firefighters are future, God, we ask that you keep them safe today. Have them return home in the manner in which they came. Let no one be injured while trying to win the gold. Father, we love them for they are our future. We love their parents who have some followed them here in, the, in support of them, Father. We, we thank you for the one rural fire department who sponsors this, giving an opportunity for the youth to just compete. And it's all in love. Father, we thank you and it is
is our desire that all who have come today return home and sick. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Elijah Carter, I'm the post president. Uh, hope everybody has fun today. I hope y'all had a good time last night at the social. Without taking up too much of your time, I'd like to introduce Battalion Chief of Jersey City Fire, John Austin. Those are the best introductions. Short, like me. <laughs> good morning. Okay, we'll try it again because the preacher couldn't get you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, it is so good to see you, and I want to thank John Franks and the Warren Rural Fire Department for inviting me down. I was here uh, in September uh, for one of the festivals where Warrington was honoring, Warrington, Warren County was honoring firefighters. Uh, not too far from here, my family's from Littleton. My dad, who's traveling with me, uh, is from Littleton. So I spent some time down here in the uh, Tar Hills and Red Clay of North Carolina chasing behind a mule named Katie. And I figured out that Katie knew a lot more about that road than I did based on some of the scars that I still wear on the top of my head. I want to thank you because you could have had anybody speak today. Um, our firefighter profession, there are so many heroes that John Coker, the, uh, one of the first chiefs of the New York City Fire Department said that anyone who desires to be a firefighter or a paid volunteer or paid on call, when they put their hands up, and say they want to be a firefighter, they have already achieved their goal. Because to serve your own community in any shape, form, or fashion, uh, and to see so many youngsters that are coming out. I wanted to be a firefighter since I was four years old. And uh, I tease my dad all the time because in my profession, I've been in now for 31 years, and now as a battalion chief, I get to work with a lot of people across the world. Uh, I've been all over the world with the fire service. So I tell young people, if you uh, have a desire to be a firefighter. It's great for you to serve your community, but don't just think it's limited to here. Firefighters are the same all over the world. And that little fire truck that I had from four years old has taken me everywhere. With God's grace, has taken me everywhere. And I continue to meet firefighters that have the same goals and same desires to serve and work with each other. And yes, firefighters, we have fun. Everyone knows that. One thing I want to say, and I heard the preacher say, to thank the parents and supporters, and also the advisors that work with some of these young folk. Uh, I have two sons. One is on the fire service, another is not. And sometimes as parents, when we talk to our young people, sometimes we're not sure if they're getting the lessons that they need. And as young folks, sometimes we don't want to listen to those lessons. But I can assure you, I've had a couple of rescues in my career. And in that, in that time, you never know when it's going to happen absolutely never know when it's going to happen. And when it does happen, you have to rely on the training. And I cannot tell you, and I see some of you nodding, some of the things that we were told as firefighters when we were juniors and we were young, when we were told, we never thought would happen, that training and that advice is what got us back home to our families and saved some people's lives. So it's also important that we listen as young folk and even as older folk in the fire, fire service. I'm 55 years old. I'm probably going to be taking that walk soon. But I still love the fire service. It is one of the noblest professions since Ben Franklin in 1776 with the first fire department. We still, believe it or not, fight fires in the same way. Now, some of us that are older, that have been fighting fires, fire has changed. We used to go to fires and wouldn't wear our masks. We didn't, have, we didn't think we had to. And for the most part, we didn't because we were breathing like Class A materials. We were breathing cloth and straw and wood. But now the fires that you're facing now as young firefighters, and as we continue to, are burning faster and hotter. And the equipment that you're wearing now is totally encapsulating you. So you have to be more cognizant and more conscious about what you're doing. The term we talk, call it is situational awareness. You 
you have to understand what that fire is doing, and as you enter that environment, how you're changing it, because it is burning hotter and faster, and it's burning hotter and faster than we've ever had to experience. And you're going to be breathing in chemicals that we never had to breathe in that will affect you long term. So you have to wear your gear. You have to be safe. And uh, when you get an order, you have to follow an order. Even if you may not think it's the right order, you may have to follow that order. Because that firefighter or officer that's giving you that order has the experience that you don't have. You've got the knowledge, and I see the juniors that are coming up. And I saw a young man running around yesterday with a chief's helmet on, and I said in my mind, I said, he's going to be a chief. He's running around barking out orders already, and he had all of his gear on. He's going to be a chief. You have to listen. We are a paramilitary and a quasi-military organization. And as a pause, are there any military, either past, present, uh, or uh, deployed, my prayers are with those that are deployed, but I want to thank you all for your service because it's not unlike the volunteer fire service. We have a voluntary mil military who also have put their hand up to put their lives on the line to protect our way of life. And so as, a, as I move to close, because I want to see the competition, and I even brought my sneakers, uh, John, so <laughs> trust me, I won't be running under that barrel, but uh, I, will, I will be around. You have to follow orders and until you understand completely what you're doing. So I just want to tell you to have a great time this morning. I want to thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm excited to see what you're going to do, and I'll be around. We can talk fire all day long because the one thing you can tell a fire, you can always tell a firefighter, but you can't tell them much. You take care, and I'll talk to you soon, and God bless you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I'm not going to give uh, any speeches. I, I do want to make a couple of points. Uh, I want to thank a bunch of people. Um, there's no way one person can, can do all this. <coughs> but we have sponsors that uh, make it possible for us to afford to do this. We have vendors out here um, that help the, the event be a little more special. We got all these teams out here. We got uh, 13 teams out here this year. Um, there's a bunch of people behind the scenes. I made a list. Of course, I left it at home. That was my thing. But I want to point out a couple people. Uh, Steve Barney, who's taking care of all the field events as far as the judging goes and getting judges. Um, Walter Gardner, see, oh, here he is. Um, he allows us to use uh, Warrington Rule. For our social last night, he, he supports the, the junior firefighter program, and uh, he allows the junior firefighters to meet at the station every month, and he puts up with us. Um, I've got uh, Norlana Fire Department out here. They support us. Um, the uh, grounds crew, they didn't get a job. Uh, fixing the field, make sure it's mowed and everything, and keeping it clean, and make sure we have toilet paper in the bathrooms. Um, the Sheriff's Department allowed us to use their gator, and they patrolled the grounds here last night. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other people that I'm forgetting that I wrote down on my list, but I just want to hear one that I, I thank them for supporting this program and allowing us to have this competition. Uh, we forgot to draw numbers. He's going first. But... So if, if the team captains will meet back behind uh, truck 30 right here, we're going to draw numbers and see who goes first, and we'll get going. All right. Wish everybody luck. Have fun.